I stand here and think about just what he's done. Start counting my blessings one by one. I sure don't deserve all that he's done for me, but I'll praise him forever through eternity. And I am amazed that he take the time to give me such blessings that fill up my life. He's given me breath and He's given me life. He saved my lost soul from torment and strife. Jesus died on the cross just to show me His love. He's building my home in heaven above. And I am amazed that He take the time to give me such blessings that fill up my life. God is so good, I cannot express how thankful I am. I am so blessed. Often I stumble as I journey this way, but His mercies are new every day. His grace is sufficient for every trial. He amazes me more and more every mile. He gave me His Word in this precious old book. It speaks to my heart every time I look. He loves me and helps me when I'm tempted to sin. Through Christ my Lord over Satan I win. time to give me such blessings that fill up my life. God is so good, I cannot express how thankful I am. And I am amazed that He take the time to give me such blessings that fill up my life. God is so good, I cannot express how thankful I am. gentlemen, I feel just like that song from the Clark family. The, what a great family and what great singers. And uh, you might be able to get some of their music. Just go to the Clark family and uh, you will find their recordings there. And uh, you really enjoy those. Well, praise the Lord. This is morning number two of this week. This is the 14th uh, Tuesday morning. And uh, we're coming to you uh, from California. I told you yesterday that I might be able to uh, record the broadcast while we were at Santa Cruz. We went to Santa Cruz today. I got a lot of good pictures, but we just didn't find the right time and the right space, the right place, the right format uh, to be able to do the broadcast from there. But I'll tell you what I'll do. After the broadcast today, sometime in the, in the afternoon here, I'll send you some of the pictures we took. It was really amazing. And uh, I don't know what all I'll be able to get. I haven't looked at all of them yet to see. I, I did get some of seagulls diving in to make their catch. And uh, that was pretty, pretty neat. And I hope I got, I hope I got one. I, I get excited when I see them and I end up taking a picture of the rail on the deck instead of the, of the, the uh, seagull out there. And uh, so it's just so many good things that the, the Lord's doing uh, across America in so many churches. I want our church to be one of them. That is North Harrison Baptist Church in Ramsey, Indiana. And for you North Harrison people, I love you very much. We really miss you. The Lord willing, we will be back in place on Sunday. That's our goal and that's our intention. And uh, this last week we ended up uh, having to make some differences in our scheduling. And, uh, but this week we should be back and I'm so thankful for it. Well, this week we're talking about six marks of a spiritual church. 
six marks of a spiritual church. And we read as our basic text, 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. And uh, it talks about laying aside some things. And then it talks about uh, that, uh, uh, that we need to, uh, to desire some things. So there's one, some things we want to get rid of. There's other things we want to desire. We want to get them in our life. He said, laying aside malice and guile, hypocrisies, envies, evil speakings, a bunch of things. But then he said, as newborn babes, we ought to desire the sincere milk of the word. Just like a, a baby would, would want that, that fresh milk uh, from mama or from the bottle or whatever, and that we ought to have that kind of desire for the word of God. I just want to get it into my life. I, I hunger for it. I thirst for it. I want to get the word of God. I'll cry out if I don't have it. I, I want it. And that's the way we ought to be. And uh, that, that's one of the foundational things of the New Testament church is that it's made up of a group of godly people who love the Lord and believe God and want to do his will and, uh, and have that kind of a passion in their life. Well, Peter tells us the best way to grow is to lay aside some things. I talked about that, desire some other things, then to taste the goodness of the Lord. And one of the things that I want to give you, and this would be number one of the six things, is prayer is the first mark of a spiritual church. A spiritual church has people that are prayer warriors, people that want to pray, people that want to spend time talking to the Lord, getting in on God's plan and God's will, submitting themselves to him through prayer saying, Lord, I surrender. Show me your will. I'm here to perform your will to do the task that you have for me. And in Acts chapter one, verse 14, the Bible says this, talking about now here's the early church that literally turned the world upside down in their day. At least that's what they were accused of. I always say, no, they turned the world that they touched. They turned that part of the world right side up. It was already upside down. And it looks to me like much of the world we're living in today is upside down. And America is in trouble today. And you know it and I know it. And we need to get back to this thing of prayer. The Bible says in verse 14, these all continue. I said verse 14 in Acts chapter number one. Acts chapter number one, verse 14. These all continue. So it's not something that just started to do this. Something they started right back at the very beginning. And, uh, and they never stopped. They continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. They met together with the family of Christ and the, the, all the disciples that, that, and the apostles that he had called together and others who had become followers, the close inner circle group, and they spent time in prayer. They spent time on their face. They spent time begging God to meet with them, to help them. And they prayed in the name of Jesus because he said, if you ask anything in my name, the Father would, would grant it. And so they, they just believed God. And they weren't asking for themselves. They were asking to fulfill the will of God and the purpose of God in their lives and how important that is. And by the way, it kind of goes along with our memory verse for this week. He said in John chapter number 13, verse 35, I have it here on my index card. I, see, I really do write it out and I really do carry it with me. And it says, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye love one another. By this, he said, there, let me tell you something that everybody will be able to know that you're one of my disciples. It's going to show up in the way you love one another. Listen to it again. John 13, 35, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if ye love one another. John 13, 35. Well, that's an important verse. And uh, get that verse into your life. Memorize it because number one is prayer, but point number two is fellowship. Now, certainly we need to be praying, praying for our nation and that sort of thing. We all know that. But then what about us getting along with one another? What about us loving one another? I've been in churches where there were literally church battles. I mean, where the, they were calling names and people getting up and storming out of the building and, and, and threatening each other and all kinds of things and bringing in people and trying to vote out pastors. And I've, been, I've seen some of those things take place. Now, I want to thank the Lord. It's never happened like that in any of the churches I've 
that I pastored or that I was on staff in. And uh, I thank the Lord for that. It's, it's always been a, a pretty calm spirit and a pretty good spirit among the people. And I'm, I'm grateful God allowed that. I hope I never have to be in that kind of situation where I have responsibility to try to do something about it. But I know it does happen. But God said the thing that's gonna be a testimony to the people around you that you belong to Jesus Christ is when he sees, when they see you loving one another and loving God and trying to fulfill his will. Over in Acts chapter number two, let's turn over there real quick. Acts chapter two, verse 42, the Bible says, and they, talking about the church, the people, the church is the people, not the building. Don't ever, don't ever get, the, get confused about that. But it says, they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. That is, here are those apostles that Jesus spent three, three and a half years training and in, investing in their lives and giving them complete direction about what he had in mind, what his plan was for the church and so forth. And he said, upon this rock, I'll build my church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And uh, he gave them this. And so they continued in the apostles' doctrine. In other words, the apostles were teaching them. Doctrine is teaching. The, the apostles were teaching them what Christ had taught them and what Christ had can, had given them instruction that when the church was planted and when he was gone, what he wanted them to do. And so they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. Now listen to this word, and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. That, that prayer is still in there, isn't it? And there's no place that God says, okay, you can stop praying now. You don't have to pray this year because everything's going well. And sometimes we do take God for granted, don't we? If things are going well in our life, we don't remember to pray. You let one of our children or one of our loved ones or one of our parents get deathly ill or be in an accident, man, all of a sudden we can find that prayer altar again, can't we? Oh, we're we're pouring our heart out. We're begging God. We're at, and, But as long as things are going good, we forget to communicate with the Lord. So that's important for, for, for a spiritual church to have people who are prayer warriors. And then he said, I want you to be in fellowship with one another. I want you to love one another. That's God's plan. That's God's will. Fellowship binds God's people together. Fellowship creates love. In John chapter 13, verse 35, the Bible says, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if ye have love one to another. Isn't that something? God said, I want you to be in fellowship. I want the people around you. I want your neighbors. I want your coworkers. I want the, the people in the marketplace and other places that you go, in the school, in, in, the, in the, where the educational process is taking place. I want them, when they see two of you Christians come in contact with each other, they automatically see that there's that friendship, there's that love, there's that communion, there's that unity and that fellowship. He said, that's gonna go a long way to you being able to carry out the commission and the work that I've left you here to accomplish. Let me read it again. John chapter uh, four, uh, 13, verse 35. By this shall all men know that you're my disciples if you have love one to another. So I talked about six marks of, spiritual, uh, of a spiritual church. And it's, when you talk about the church, you're actually talking about the people. So the people need to be prayer warriors and the people need to love one another, need to have that Christian fellowship, realizing like we're a family, we're the family of God. And uh, every church that I've been part of, it just seems like maybe that's one of the reasons I never had to deal with one of those nasty church splits or one of those things is that somehow the church family loved one another. They were like a family. And when they had a difference, they wanted to work it out. They didn't want to say, you go your way, I'll go mine. They said, we're a family. We're going to stay in this thing. We're going to figure it out. We're not going to fight it out. We're going to figure it out. We're going to get it settled and have that fellowship. Now, if you're in a church that have, that's having problems, hey, and I hate to say this, if you're in a church and you're part of the problem, won't you ask God, go, get, get back to that prayer closet and ask God, to help you be part of the solution instead of part of the problem. I believe God can use you like that and he wants to use you and he will do it in a great, great way. Well, again, here we are and on Tuesday and six marks of, spiritual, uh, of a spiritual church, six things that should help you to identify what a really spiritual church is like. And I pray that we'll have a church like that 
And I pray that if you're not part of North Harrison, that the church you attend is like that. And you know that it is, and, and that's the way it is. And, and that you're gonna be part of helping the church to be stronger and to build up and go forward and have the, ha have the hand of God on it because you're trying to do the will of God as an individual and as a people combined there together. And uh, I believe God will use that in a great, great way. So prayer is the first mark of a spiritual church. Fellowship is the second mark. And tomorrow we'll talk about another mark or two. We'll get all six of them in before the week's out. And we're gonna pray here in just a moment. And then the uh, music will take us off the air today. Uh, I love you, thank God for you. And uh, hey, by the way, let your friends know about this, uh, this mid-morning manna. As a matter of fact, just hit that share button before you close it out today and uh, let folks know what God's doing in your life. Just that, you say, well, I, I wouldn't know what to say to anybody, but just hit the button and let, let that talk to you. People say, hey, yeah, you know, Joe Blow sent this to me. This must mean something to him. Let them know something means something to you that's, that's eternal, that's lasting. And let them know you care enough about them to want them to get in on it too. Well, let's pray together and then we'll have the music. Heavenly Father, thank you for your love and blessing. Thank you, Lord, for prayer. Thank you for fellowship. Those are things that can help Christians to grow and that can help a godly church to become more godly and more spiritual as God's people grow in grace. I pray God you'll help us now. And we thank you, Lord, for those marks and the others we'll talk about later this week. We give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Do not wait until some deed of greatness you may do. Do not wait to shed your light afar. To the many duties ever near you now be true. Brighten the corner where you are. Brighten the corner where you are. Brighten the corner where you are. Someone far from harbor you may guide across the bar. Brighten the corner where you are. Just above our clouded skies that you may help to clear. Let not Here reflect the bright and morning star. 